Oh my goodness. Okay. Hi everyone. <laughs> that was, um, sorry, I'm two minutes late. Um, and as always, I have to wait for the video to appear. I just got my computer back from the shop. So of course, um, I had to re-sign in to my YouTube channel and then I had to get a code texted to me. And then this is so boring. Don't you love how every time I start my live, I have to start with complaining. Okay, um, hold on. I need to get all settled. It's been, it's been a day already. Um, okay, there we go. So as always, you know, I never feel like I'm live until you come in and say hello. So um, I see there's 15 of you watching. But you know, 30 seconds delay, blah, blah, blah. Come in and say hello. Okay, there you go. Hello, Ashley from the UK, uh, Shannon from Oregon. Okay, you guys are starting to come in. Oh, New Mexico is in the house. Wouldn't it be great if just one time I like started smoothly? But um, yeah, so my computer's been crazy. It's been in, I had to send it away to Apple. I got a loaner. This is so boring. Um, oh, you guys are all coming in. Washington, Northern California, Boston, Northampton, Mississippi, San Francisco, Long Island. Oh, Chicago. You know, I was born there. I don't know if you knew that. Um, PA, Massachusetts, Minnesota. Oh, nice haircut. Thank you. Um, it was my friend's wedding, so I cut all my hair off. Uh, Florida, Cincinnati. Oh, my God, you guys. Hello. Utah. Wow, this is a big showing. I, I guess because Kate is here <laughs> and we're going to talk about yarn. Um, hello from Florida. Hello from Montreal. Ooh, Canada's in the house. You know, Kate's from Canada. Nyack, Denmark. Uh, no, you're not late joining. I was late starting. Baltimore. Ooh, Toronto's in the house. Yay. Alberta's in the house. Okay, we have a good Canadian showing that's going to make Kate very happy. All right. So while you guys continue to come in, oh, New Zealand. What time is it, New Zealand? New Zealand. I'm trying to do math. I can't figure out what time it is there. I think it's probably pretty late. Ottawa, okay, very good Canadian representation. Okay, um, so glad to see you guys all here. There's been a lot going on that has caused me to have a lot of thoughts, so many feels, um, more Toronto in the house, excellent. Um, and, and I was thinking like, this is good it's good timing and it's in a way good timing and bad timing that I have Kate today. It's bad timing because I feel like I could just talk for 45 minutes on my own because I have so much to say. It's good timing because so much of what I have to talk about is pattern writing, what should and shouldn't be in a pattern. And, oh, thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Um, and what knitters uh, should be bringing to the table and getting out of their craft. So um, Shannon, remind me again about the short row. I'm gonna tell you about that in a second. So in a way it's good timing because I have here um, somebody that knows a lot about patterns. Someone knows a lot about knitting. Someone that knows a lot about teaching knitting. Um, and so without further ado, I'm going to give the fancy lower third welcome to Kate Atherley, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. There she Hello. is. Hi. Wait, no, I have to turn off the fancy lower third. Okay. All right. Okay. There. Um, there's a, a lot more Canada in the house than usual today. Um, we, have, we have Ottawa, we have Alberta, we have uh, Toronto, we have Montreal represented. Um, we have a lot of Canada today. Nice. Hello, Canada. I don't know if that's, so Canada, tell me, are you guys here just for a certain fellow Canadian? Because this seems like a, this seems like a pretty heavy Canadian attendance. Um, oh, hello from steamy New Jersey. Yeah, I know it's New York. Oh, thank you. I'm getting a lot of nice haircut. Thank you. Um, I like to cut it all off. Oh, Shannon says, I just watched Kate Atherley's craftsy blocking class a few days ago. Whoop, whoop. Yay. Excellent. Yay. Okay. Um, oh, hello from Houston. All right. So folks are pouring in. We have a larger immediate um, attendance than usual. I'm guessing that's because A, you, and B, uh, uh, yeah. 
we have I got, to I just to got a little, I just yeah. got a message that says, yep, here for Kate. Uh, I love you, Patty, but you too, Kate. Okay, that's, that's totes legit. Um, but yeah, when I said we're going to be talking yarn, a lot of people on Instagram were like, oh, I'm all in for that. And I got a couple, um, uh, I'm, I'm here to geek out. Oh, here's another Toronto in the house. Jennifer says, um, I'm in Toronto, but I love you both. Yeah, That's nice. Oh, Carolyn says, love her new book. Ooh. It's really new. Oh, Alana says, Canadians stick together. Yes, true. <laughs> and so ready for this convo. Um, I love Kate, Julie says, attended several classes and even had the privilege of hiring her for a private lesson many years ago. Okay, so there's a lot of Kate fans in the house today. So we are here to talk some yarn. Now, how many of you um, saw Kate's, well, it was an Instagram post, but it linked to, to a blog post, right? So it's on your website and I'm gonna put a link in the show notes of the YouTube to your website and then a special link just to that post so Super, people could go yeah. right to it. Yeah. Um, so tell, tell a little bit about like what you wrote about and what prompted the whole thing. Yeah, so there's been a bunch of discussion and I'm not doing it any level of service here, but there's been a bunch of discussion recently raised by uh, some reasonable questions about, okay, I, I have a pattern, can't find the yarn. How do I go about finding the yarn? Which vital question, right? Like this is the basis of what so much of what we do, right? So much of what this industry is about. And frankly, it's about so much of the fun, which is why I'm obscuring all of the heaps of yarn here, but it's why we have all this yarn. I like to make it look tidy. Um, but it's, yeah, how do I choose a good yarn, right? Which is a super question. And it's a question I love to talk to people about. And what's happened is there's been a ton of back and forth about kind of where the responsibility sits for making a yarn substitution, right? And there's a lot that I can't engage in because I'm not as informed. And, you know, my position is I have access to a lot of yarn, right? Yarn arrives at my front door. Patty and I get this, you know, the mailman arrives. It's like, oh, is there yarn? Um, but not everybody's in the same position. But I came at it from the perspective of, you know, the patent writer and the technical editor. Because I, a number of years ago now, wrote a book about how to write knitting patterns. Because I'm... I have training as a mathematician and I worked in the tech industry specifically in the training and the documentation side of things. So I'm a, a doctor. I'm like a technical writer. And one of the things that I've got a skill for that a lot of people don't, and that's cool. It's like, I know a lot of great knit designers who are so good at the design. I think that's why what you see in the back of Patty's, in Patty's background, is a beautiful, amazing sweater. And you see books in my background, right? That tells you kind of where our brains are. So I'm well, the writer I'm also, and she's the designer. I'm also set so, up. This is my teaching land. Yeah, exactly. So, but it's, but it says something. So I, what I do is with my book about patent writing and with my work as a technical editor, I try and help people corral the sort of the creative stuff into a set of instructions. And the way that I look at it as a knitting pattern is there should be enough information in there so that someone can reduce what you did. So they can make for themselves, and I know Patty. So let me finish. No, no, you know, but, long but, no, no. This is, but this is the, the one of my points about people's complaint about not putting yarn information in a pattern. My attitude is okay. You're not. You're clearly not purchasing a tech edited pattern. Yeah, well, because yeah, no, exactly. There's a lot. Yeah, because so no, much the, if, nobody yeah. would. No tech edited pattern. People are saying it's impossible. It's all well and good for you to say Google it. But uh, when uh, I'm getting patterns that don't have the yardage, don't have the fiber content, don't have the weight, well, then this comes back to you are not purchasing a tech edited professionally written pattern yeah, exactly. because zero professional designer would publish a pattern that said four balls of Joe Schmo's Merino piece. Yeah. Yes. Well, and that's it. So for me, the list of things that must, must, must be included included to enable the knitter's success and that's it so what I did is I wrote a post that I it was started as a Twitter 
And they're like, no, 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 there's too much here. So I, I created a post on my website and I apologize for the headings because I'm still trying to figure out WordPress themes. So the headings are ugly, but whatever. What I did was I talked about what information a designer should include in their pattern, like at a minimum, and I'm real, and Patty knows this, I'm really hardened on this. For me, there's an absolute minimum of information that needs to be included. And if you, if you don't include that, then I'm like, I'm not interested in, in looking at the pattern. It says it's not ready, right? And that is the yarn type, like the yarn company and brand, like, and yarn name. I want the fiber content, crucial, right? Yeah, uh -huh. exactly, comma. I want the put up. By that, I mean the size of the thing. Right. Is it gram ball, 109 yes. yards, or what are these like, meters. you know, like, or what are these? Is it a mini, right? So I want to see the size of the thing and what the yardage is in that thing, right? Then I want the designer to tell me how many of those things got used. Because obviously here, like you're gonna need more of those than you are of those, right? Yeah, here we go. Um, so that's absolute minimum to me because without that, there's no way the knitter can find anything, can find what they need. Oh, and gauge turns out gauge information, and I was I was sort of amazed that that got missed in all the discussions about yarn substitution. So something else I'm really hard nosed on is that you must include even if your sweater is all over cables and I'm pointing what you can't see here. I'm pointing at Patty's. Then, thank you, Patty's pointing. Even with that sweater, if Patty sends me that pattern, I'm going to say, and stockinette gauge, please. You know, because. Then, can, I, can I say every single thing that you listed yeah. are magazine specs. So for those of us who came through the ranks. Yep. Designing for magazines we were trained in a certain format yep. that I carry with me to this day. Yep. So yep. every magazine has their, that, that list has to be in every, like you have a form that Vogue sends you and it says uh, stock neck gauge, gauge and dominant stitch pattern, yep. um, exactly how many balls of yarn you used, weight of the finished garment. And then obviously they know all the yarn specs because they sent you the specs. Yep. So yep. coming from that world, before I entered the self-publishing world, I came from the magazine world. I'm yep. trained in that style of writing. Yep. yep. And, you know, in books too, if you've written for a book or something like yes. that, that stuff will be there. It will be mandatory in the style sheet. And I want to just dig into the stockinette gauge because... Um, designers get why I'm including it, but I know that I had a few knitters say, holy cow, I hadn't realized that. So let me explain for the benefit on the call. I want to see stockinette gauge because that's a clue to yarn substitution. Right. Because if you, if you look at Patty's gorgeous sweater, uh, Patty's gorgeous sweater, the cable gauge is going to be what? I don't know. I'm going to make this up like 28 stitches over four right. inches in cable pattern. Well, what yarn is that? Depends on how the cable pattern is, depending on how many turns there are, et cetera, et cetera. But if she then says to me, oh, if she then says to me, I'm Hello. sorry about that. Let me just make sure. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Um, oh, if she calling. then says to me that it um, was also in stockinette, it's 20 stitches in four inches. I'm like, oh, great. I can shop for yarn based on that. So that yeah. gay okay. stockinette gauge gets you to identify the right category of yarn. I'm going to go one farther. So in my gauge class, I always say, look up the stockinette gauge of the yarn originally used because that's, mm -hmm. although once I taught it in a yarn shop and I said, now say the gauge of the pattern is 28 stitches and, and you know, 32 rows and twisted rib. What do you buy one ball of yarn, uh, one of every type of ball of yarn in the yarn shop and start swatching? And the yarn store owner went, yeah, do that's what you, she's like, just kidding. I so love I it. Say, yeah. So I would say like, okay, look up what was the stock in a gauge of the yarn originally yep. used. Does that mean you're not going to swatch in pattern? No, but it's going to put you in the right grocery store aisle. And then one, yep. one more level, I talk yep. about what if, you know, if the gauge on a ball band is stock in it, what if the gauge in the pattern is stock in it? Now, can I just... Um, buy based on the ball band. And I still say, no, still 
look up the stockinet gauge of the yarn originally used because you might find out they're gloves and you go, oh, I see the, the gauge of the glove is 28 stitches per four inch in stockinette. But if I just buy a 28, oh, I'm not gonna get that fabric because if I looked up the stockinette gauge on the ball band of the yarn originally used, I'll see, oh, I see she took, um, or he took a 20 stitch per four and see that was my email making a ding because I forgot to turn it off. 20 stitch per four inch yarn and knit it purposely densely. Exactly. Like exactly. I did on this guy, uh, this was a chain at construction and yep, I yep. compressed the air out of it because I wanted it to float away from your body and blah, blah, blah. But yep. you did so, yeah. where the conversation so they, started, which I do want to yeah. be fair about, which was, it wasn't, it didn't start with the, how do I make a yarn sub? No, no, no. I'm not, honestly, I will say this. I'm not sure where it started because I missed some of the, some of the stuff. I, let me, because you know me, I got a long answer. So please go read the, the blog post that I wrote. Because what I did in the post was I addressed the designer, said why well, I needed two columns, right? The designer and then the knitter. And I said, designers, please inc include this information. And dear knitter, this is why it's there. And this is how it's a good tool for you. And so I kind of tried to explain like, yeah, designer you know and I put my glasses on Patsy noses and I stare at you menacingly or please do this but knitter understand this is how this is useful for you so from my perspective I absolutely will the designer will need to for many reasons describe name list be specific about the yarn they used but then the knitter can use that information, even if they're not buying that yarn, even if that yarn doesn't exist anymore. Joe Schmo's Merino, it's been off the market for years, but ooh, it's Merino. Ah, okay, that becomes a clue, right? So we want the yarn, even if I'm not gonna use that yarn, even if right. I think Merino is silly, which that's the thing I'll say when the, um, you know, that's the clue that I've been abducted, by the way. If I say Merino is silly, you know, to come rescue me. But um, even and if the, I think Merino is silly, I want to, right? The yeah. density, the relationship between weight and yardage. So I see exactly. patterns with yardage and no grams, and that's not helpful. I need to know yep. the relationship exactly. between weight and yardage. Yeah. Density so, affects so much. Yeah. So there's all this stuff, but there's a, there's a ton of clues. But as a newer knitter... You don't necessarily know how to read those clues. Absolutely not. Just as a newer baker, I'm like, I'm not sure. What do they mean by like, what's between bread flour and cake flour? Uh, I don't know. I've not been doing that much baking during, during lockdown. So there's stuff that, you know, I'd like to see designers provide really simple in addition to what those that basic line to help out those newer knitters to learn a bit more and really what I want to see is that like a, a one sentence description of that yarn is it fluffy is it tightly spun is it uh, an eyelash yarn is it a boucle is it fuzzy is it a couple more characteristics stuff that you can't necessarily see in the pictures and that gives the knitter this is the important bit the power to choose the yarn that's accessible to them and that works for them. And when I'm talking about accessibility, it's like it's, yeah, price accessibility is a huge piece of it, but global accessibility too. Even in Canada now, there's yeah. yarns that we can't get because shipping across the border is not reliable. Uh, and when the dollar fluctuates, there's times when I'm just not going to buy yarn from the US. So there's well, all of that stuff. Color even. Sometimes you have your heart set on a color for that project. Yep. And that yarn simply doesn't come in that color. Like, because different yarns, like I remember having this conversation uh, with Classic Elite where they talked about like, we have a color style for this yarn. So like, yeah, maybe this yarn is all soft pastels, which we feel like complements the. So if you never wear pastels, you might love everything about that yarn, but the color. So that's a legit right. reason to substitute, yeah. you know, aside and from all the other reasons. But, and Substitution, I think, is is huge, and uh, I think it was Amy. Oh, and I'm forgetting her name. I know about seventy people called Amy, um, but uh, she did Thread Panda. Her Instagram handle is Thread Panda, 
Uh, and um, she did an amazing breakdown. She did some analysis on Ravelry of projects and how many people have used the recommended yarn in a, a project. It was a story and I, I messaged her and said, please, please, please do this because there's so much good data in it. Very few people use the recommended yarn. Very few people. Because right. all the recommended yarn is just, I say this about the needle size. The only conclusion that you can draw from a needle size listed in the pattern is that's the needle size. Is that the sample knitter used the or the designer used? Yeah, it's true. Because I sometimes tell the designers to lie, but that's a different story. But, and the same thing with the yarn, right? Like, if you knit weird, do you knit weird? I know some people who knit much, much tighter and much, much looser, right? Amy, so Amy a, a super fast, yeah, a super she, fast continental knitter often knits really loose. So they're going to use a needle size way different than the average knitter pretty fast to get, but this is a separate thing. Anyway, I think a lot about this stuff you can see. So what we've got here is um, like, we're using, as a designer, we're using one specific yarn to a thing. But that doesn't mean you, you can use it. That doesn't mean you want to use it. And I'm just using that because it's what I had. But there's nothing that says you have to use that yarn. Or you're using it because, like some of these things, I've like I swatched a million yarns. So there's a difference yeah. between, I, so here's the thing. I think as far as like the romance copy about a yarn, there's, when I put that in is when there's something specific to say. If it is literally a four ply worsted weight wool where, you know, I mean, I used to work for a yarn company where someone was spinning poetic about like why this yarn was so different. And the owner of the yarn company said, okay, we're all just in this private meeting together. Can we just call, can we just, acknowledge a four ply wool is a four ply wool is a four ply wool is a four ply wool. There's nothing special about this yarn, right? Yeah. But when like I finally, I've been swatching subs for this because this is a yarn that was discontinued. Oh, this is Cotolana. I, yeah. This yarn was hard to sub and yep. this is a video sweater class and it has a video about the yarn properties that come with the video mm. sweater class. And I yep. talk about the density, the fact that this thing is all in ribs. So why the chain at construction is important because it's airy and it's so light. So it took me a while after this got discontinued. And by the way, this happens to designers sometimes. This yarn was discontinued between the time I designed it and it was published. Not the fault of Barocco because Barocco is very mm -hmm. smart when they work with designers and they'll tell you, Ooh, don't use that yarn that's on a do not design list because it's going out. No, the mill shut down. Yep. So they had uh, zero oh, intention of discontinuing yeah. this yarn. None whatsoever. So it was one not of my there. books because books are super long lead. And so, yeah, like in, but in with a book, there's always a risk because it can be like 18 months between totally. designing and publishing. But like, so it happens with a book, but with a, like a pattern between knitting and, oh, oh I know. What a so, and it yeah. was not their, it wasn't their fault. It wasn't, the, they were yeah. so yep. caught unaware. But so I just printed three after um, I got sent a bunch of yarn. Steve sent me a bunch of yarn um, to swatch with. And I found a chainette with the identical fiber content, the wool cotton blend, then another chainette option, 100% cotton if you have allergies and another chain at construction if you wanted uh, uh, to be warmer, a wool um, alpaca, which I could never wear at my age, but you know, God bless you 20 something. But um, so, uh, 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 nil quit, knit quilt, so stitch. Oh, that's hard to read. That's hard to say fast. Wrote, um, the conversation started with suggested suggestions as to how designers can be more inclusive of knitters and crocheters who cannot afford yarns um, that are mid to high price range. And that is where the conversation started. And then it went to some helpful places and it went to some super not helpful places. Mm. And I, I'm on post two of three <laughs> addressing what I think are some of the super not helpful places. And I just, I wanted to be honest about a couple of those. And, 
And also like, to be honest, you know, with Kate and I don't always agree. Um, and, and, and I love her and that is okay. And, and you're yeah. always respectful when I, when I push back. But I remember once at, at Make Wear Love, you were teaching a class that was aimed at knitters. Ha- knitters, what should you look for in a knitting pattern? Mm. Knitters, and, and there were a lot of interesting questions like, well, I, mm. how do I tell before I purchase it? And you had said, yeah, that's true. Um, so, so much of it is like, trying and buying reputation but also i remember you said look at the number of projects if there are 500 projects and zero seated and the pattern's five years old it might tell you and i thought that was an interesting point that i'd never thought about and i stole that point by the way i put it in my instagram post stole it you said that might point to maybe something very different like the patterns confusing right there's 500 projects bought but nobody's completed it yep and then you also said or maybe there's a bunch of projects completed and you read through the notes and every single one talks about how they modified it to make the neck look like the picture because i don't know how they did you know um so that was interesting but the one where we had a, we had a disagreement yep was when somebody asked, um, well, wh- I find it frustrating when a pattern tells you, you know, to do something like German short rows and you don't know how to do it. And you said, well, it's totally valid. You can always give the designer feedback like, oh, it would be really helpful if you included a video link. And I talked to you afterwards and I said, mm. oh, I am, I, I, I had a, here's my feels on that mm. is for an $8 pattern, not every designer is a knitting teacher. And what should and shouldn't be in a pattern? Is it the yep. pattern's responsibility to teach the technique? Where is the separation between the knitting how-to book mm-hmm. and the pattern? And the price difference in my video sweater classes is the video yep. sweater classes are $18 and a pattern's eight. Exactly, yeah. And- where it gets fuzzy and it's i actually agree with you here that we cannot teach everything where it gets interesting for me is where we draw the line because we absolutely have to draw the line somewhere where we draw the line is also going to depend on the audience for your pattern because there isn't one one right. audience there isn't one set of knitters so i write patterns and my patterns tend to sort of at the teaching end the your first sock or your first you know this is it and so i will often add value to something which otherwise might be quite straight considered quite straightforward by putting lots of tutorials in and things if i see a knitter buying a pattern that says this is really easy and includes German short rows and grafting in pattern. And right. at that point, I'm like, okay, you got a mismatch there. And, and I think it's where- helpful. You, you mentioned in your class, also at Make Wear Love, you yep. gave a suggestion that I had never thought about before. And now I do. I, I, I follow this. You said, you know, it's helpful. What if on the Ravelry page or on the sell page, if you don't use Ravelry, you list uh, techniques. Yep. that are done in the past. So yep. then you're not buying a pattern and going. Uh, yeah, exactly. Not. Yeah, so, exactly. Because it's perfectly tip. cool to have a pattern that's written for an expert knitter. I'm perfectly cool with that. And that pattern may have zero yarn substitution information beyond the, I used this yarn and I used three skeins of it. And this was my stockinette gauge. And this was my pattern stitch gauge. End of story. Like that could be all the information because an expert knitter would be with for this particular type of project it's like okay cool that tells me what i need to know and it may use german short rows and entrelac and yeah grafting in pattern and think of all of the all of the rid- most ridiculous things you can include in a pattern and that's okay if you say this pattern assumes experience cool I'm good or with if that. you list all those yeah and, and, absolutely. And, you know and they and then the uh, short rows reminds me you would also someone also asked you like well what about um uh do you list like why you chose a technique and i when you talk about like um choosing your audience i 
do I write all my shoulder shaping as stair step bind offs? Why? Because it's telling you how many stitches go away at the shoulder. If you, the knitter, go, oh, I know the slope bind off, I'm going to do that one, or I know the decrease bind off, or I'm going to do that as short rows. But if I wrote it for short row shaping, I'm eliminating a, yeah. a, a knitter from being able to do that. Yep. So I, I always say patterns should be written in the most inclusive mm -hmm. language skill wise. And yep. that I learned from an early tech editor, a tech yep. editor yep. that I worked with at Creative Knitting. Yep. And I used to write patterns to, she called them cute. She, uh, uh, like I had, a, I had a neck divide where I wrote in the pattern one of the tricks that I teach in Patty's Knitting Bag of Tricks. And she said, it's too, it's yep. too fussy. And if, if a knitter knows that skill and wants to do it, that's fine. But you've made a, a, a neck divide that should be one sentence, four paragraphs. And now you're going to lose knitters. They're going to look at it and go, oh, that's so many words. Mm, yeah. 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 And so it's, you know, and that so was a good you, learning loop. Yeah. And I mean, I, I'm both with you and not with you on the, if a pattern uses German short rows, we should link to a tutorial because we should, if we're aiming it at knitters, then point them and we say, because it's perfectly okay to say pattern assumes knowledge of German short rows. It's also okay, okay to say pattern uses German short rows, but I've provided a tutorial because this is a good learning pattern, right? And those are both still valid. But so, and I, you, but, but it's your you this, choice. But let yeah. me ask you this, the, 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 and this is where I have an issue with it. And this is where I have yeah. an issue with this entire discussion, because there's three, three, I think, dangerous roads that this industry is being pushed towards. Yeah. Um, so there's a little thing called YouTube mm -hmm. and there's a million German oh. short row tutorials by professional yeah. designers yeah. and by yarn companies or knitting magazines or trusted yep. sources, right? If I see a German short row tutorial by me or mm. by Bristol Ivy or, you mm. know, or, knittinghelp.com or yep. knitting daily. Yeah. But what I have an issue with is not every designer is a knitting teacher. And so I can Correct. film a German short row tutorial where I break it down in a way that you can learn. Yep. A, I think the expectation that for an $8 pattern, they also should include this, oh, yeah. and, this and this and this and this is now we're going to get into a discussion about price inclusivity yeah. when it comes to patterns. And I agree. And just for the record, I agree completely with you here. I'm not, I'm certainly not proposing all patents include this. And I don't want to see, because there's nothing worse than an overburdened pattern. Oh, patterns that are 17 pages long and have all of this information and Patty and I were having a chuckle about one that we both encountered where instead of just saying UNT which is the an appropriate abbreviation for wrap and turn it actually in every row spells out bring yarn slip stitch it's like oh oh talk about overburdening so oh, that's what Shan and Shannon wrote remind me that, that uh, tell me about the short row and that was yeah the, the thing the, the end result of that was that that was a knitter that was in my beginning short row class Yep. And, and an hour into this three hour class, she raised her hand and said, oh, I, I guess I have done short rows. It ju I just didn't know it was called short rows. So my thing about being a knitting teacher is I want to teach translatable and transferable skills. Yeah, so when absolutely. a pattern writes it out, knit 15 stitches, move yarn, slip stitch, she didn't know that she learned short rows because yeah, exactly. I just said wrap and turn with a definition of it. Yep. And then maybe she'd try it on her needles. Like the definition might be, oh, that's weird. But you know what? A well-written definition shouldn't need a video tutorial. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. Like I, words on yeah. page. Yeah. Give it a try. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Except um, maybe grafting in pattern, but that's different. But yeah, no, exactly. So it's, <laughs> we can't, right? Like, 
we can't teach everything and uh, we can't help with everything and for me i think about there's an interesting thing happening as well. I love YouTube, but YouTube also makes me nervous. And Patty used the crucial word there, which is a reliable, like a trusted source, because there's right. a lot of stuff on YouTube, right? Uh, but it doesn't mean it's all great. But like we've got, there are two on skateboards. Right. Yeah. There are two interesting things happening because what we've got is we've got all of these amazing resources, but you don't necessarily have the filter of someone to tell you which resource is right for your situation. You don't have auntie or gran or mom or best friend sitting beside you saying, oh yeah, no, that's what, do this one, this one's what you need. And so if YouTube is kind of a fire hose of good stuff and bad stuff, right? Um, there's a lot of great stuff, but yeah, how do you know you found a video that's going to be accurate and correct and all of that and, stuff? So there's that asked, problem. Yeah, and Emily asked, um, do you think it's okay to put a link in, in a pattern to a tutorial that is not your own, but that you found helpful crediting the owner, of course? Absolutely, yes, yeah. But ask first. I yep. am so appreciative of that. So yep. I have a few tutorials that are super popular with other designers. Yep. One of them is... Um, uh, is my German short rows. Another yep. one is a photo tutorial of how to close the last wrap when you return to working in the round in German short rows without the hole, because yep. that's a, that's a, and that's a, like an ugly little secret. And also when you return to working in the round with wrap and turn, it's an ugly little secret that you have to do it differently. Yeah. You, you do like hole, you it backwards. Little, yeah. Yeah. And I get emails all the time. Would it be okay if you include that link? And I always feel like, yes, of course. Yeah, so absolutely, yeah, yeah. Ask. it's super. Yeah, super absolutely. Yeah. And it can be providing help can be as simple as so making the fun. statement, hey, this assumes knowledge or I've provided the link to a tutorial. That's as simple as that. Like I don't want everybody writing all of this stuff down. I really, really, really don't. There's another piece to, to the pattern writing piece is what we've got is we've got people coming at patterns that don't have the same language base and don't have the same um, sort of common base of knowledge. And I learned this, learned some really important lessons, tech editing for nitty.com because nitty is truly global. And we get both designers and knitters who whose first language is not English from all over the world. And it's, it puts things in a different light if you have to look at it from the perspective of someone who is, they're not necessarily translating it word by word, but you've got to make sure that it's translatable. You've got to make sure it's understandable to someone who's got the technical language, but not necessarily, because I can read an Italian in German. Do I speak German? No, but I know the word for knit, right? Word for pearl. And I know the word for like, you know, those key words. So it puts it in a different light too. If you start thinking about how do I make buttons understandable to people whose first language is not necessarily English. And by the way, button for me, more words yeah. is helpful. So yeah. that's where the more words, the more like a Japanese knitting pattern. <laughs> I don't speak Japanese. I can follow. So yeah, more words absolutely. does not necessarily yeah. equal more clarity. Yep. It yeah. can often be a hot mess. Yeah, because yeah. for me, the difference between what I describe as editorial versus algorithmic instructions. An editorial instruction is, uh, okay, so to form the upper body of the garment, bind off four stitches at the beginning of the next two rows, then decrease at the rate of uh, one uh, decrease row every four working uh, directional decreases, a couple of stitches in from the edges to enable assembly, make sure the arm side is deep enough. Like those sorts of verbal like, instructions. Like our grandmother's like, patterns. Yeah, I those mean, are really hard to follow if you don't have good, strong, like casual language English or why, what I, someone said to me early in my editing career, she said she likes a pattern where she can check off a row, right? 
And that made me think, it's amazing how these little bon mots, you, you've taken them from our conversations, I've taken them from conversations with you, and it made me think about it. So instead of saying, working at the rate of one every four rows, decrease one stitch each end of blah, blah, blah. I was like, whoa, whoa, what does that mean? That means decrease, next row, brackets, decrease. Here's your instructions. Check. You know, there's a you know? marriage that's also helpful. Uh, yeah. Something that never occurred to me but a student said, I was teaching, um, I think, Secrets of Spectacular Sweater Success, and I was talking about how now patterns are so spoon-fed, they're row by row by row mm -hmm. by row by row. You only see the dots, you can't step back and see the Surratt picture. And I was saying, like, my grandmother's pattern said things like, cast on 20 inches worth of stitches in your gauge, knit the desired number of rows until body length is achieved, armhole shaping, bind off one inch worth of stitches in your gauge, followed by decreasing away at a rate of every other row, every row, or every fourth row until desired crossback measurement is achieved. Mm. Armhole shaping should take place in the lower third of the armhole. Now, this knitter raised her hand and said, I gotta be honest, that tells me so much more than a pattern. Oh, it I does, knew, I agree. I never knew the armhole shaping should take place in the lower third of the armhole. Yeah. That's important yep. information. Yep. yep. So sometimes like an overview paragraph when it oh, like in volition, there was very complicated construction. Yeah. So there was yep. like, these aren't the line by line instructions. These are the overview. So how this is constructed is this, we're going to do this, this. So like if that was paired, what you just Absolutely. said, like, yep. our whole shaping is going to be at the rate of the, the, the and we're yeah. going to do this and it should be okay now. Yeah. Let's go. And my, my two one. of my favorite words, yeah, two of my favorite words are as follows. Yeah. Because it connects, because I think your stuff's important. I think they go together. And I think we're going to construct the armholes by doing this as follows. I just so finished writing that in the new, yeah. the new sweater pattern that I'm working on. It's very yeah. complicated. So complicated yeah. to write, not complicated to knit, complicated to write because I designed myself into a corner. Disc so I, I love your disclaimer. To, yeah. Uh, so that's yeah. my fault for being, for, for not listening to something a tech editor tried to teach me early on, a tech editor from Knit, Knit Style. She sent me a note and she said, I appreciate you trying to be respectful of every size and being true to every size, but sometimes you have to compromise to make it easier to read. So her point was by being dead true Yep. to the pattern grading of every size. No two sizes had anything in common when it came to the rates of shaping. So she's like, what you do is be dead true. Now step back and look and go, well, if this one was just half an inch shorter, then it would match size one and two would match. Okay. Yep. So then I, she's like, that, is that going to kill you? So that was, yeah. yeah, so I, yeah, I designed myself yeah. into a bit of a corner with this one, but I yeah. used the as follows with like this overview, and then I was yeah, like, absolutely, yeah. Um, so we need also, you know, so much of this is about comments. about happy mediums, right? About finding things that work in such a way, and it is it being inclusive because the ed, like the descriptive alone method doesn't really work. The the follow these instructions and don't ask any questions method it doesn't really work either because it doesn't teach things. It's about kind of bringing, providing the information and enough information that the knitter can understand what they're doing so that they can also then jump off and do the, make the changes they want to. Because I think it's pretty rare and I don't expect people to knit my patterns exactly verbatim. I'm hoping that they, you make it your own. I'm hoping you at least well, you like know, jumping if, off point. right. Choose the yarn that you love. Choose the yarn that speaks to you. Choose the yarn that's right for your circumstance. I'm hoping that you, you know, uh, make it, maybe make it longer. Um, that was a lesson to me that um, some of my early garment patterns, the sleeves were too short because I was designing them for little me. Um, so I'm hoping that you make sure the sleeves are, the, I do it now. My, I'm hoping that you make sure the sleeves are the right length. I'm hoping, I have right, orangutan you do, arms. So yeah. when I used to knit patterns as written, all my sleeves would end like there. Yeah. So what you do is you take one of my pattern sleeves and one of a Patty's pattern sleeves and etch them and you get a normal arm. But but it's like I they are ultimately jumping off points. So there's, you know, 
we want to provide enough information so that you have a complete project to complete understand but it's just a it's just a jumping off point it's just a this is creativity, right? This is the joy, make it your own. And like recipe, my hope is that someone at least kind of approaches it by reading through the whole thing. And I've, I'm gonna put huge asterisks on that. I am not a tool of the, please read every line and understand every single line, because you no, can't. No, because sometimes, sometimes. No. It makes sometimes no sense to it's on the needles, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, I wrote a blog post once about like yeah. where I did all the things of like things people are told like, oh, read yeah. through a pattern until you understand it. Don't read through a pattern. Just get it on your knees. Because there are times when I read something, I'm like, I don't get this. But you know what? When I get there, yep. then I'll read it again. Yeah, exactly. Because sometimes yeah. then it's like, oh, OK, I see. Now at this yeah. point, in the pattern, I only have two stitches over here. And that's why. OK. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But if yeah. I read it from the beginning, it wouldn't make any sense to me. Yeah, but I think when I talk about sort of reading a pattern, like read the pattern notes, get a sense of like, get yourself your understanding of how it's constructed. Right. Because when I teach a pattern writing class, I love it because I get just get to harangue people for three hours about writing and writing instructions. I love it. What the the thing that I say is, if you take one thing away from my class, it is add an introduction add some information up front about the thing tell the knitter what to expect especially also if it's let anything the knitter... unusual exactly and like also... if it's not just a bottom up seamed yeah yeah like this know. sweater is constructed like side to is... side yeah. right or this is in one piece you will increase for yeah. the sleeves the sleeves are integrated you don't sew them in yeah. because if you only I'm ever using sure... yeah sewn pieces you'd be like where's the instructions for the sleeves you're like exactly. oh it's... so yeah <laughs> so an introduction set the stage for the knitter like this is what you can expect this is what it's going to be like equally i always tell the designer that's your opportunity to tell the knitter what you expect of them right so this opinion. becomes Oh, fair enough. This becomes your opportunity to say to the knitter, okay, this sweater, the sleeves are constructed in one piece. They're picked up from the armhole and worked down. The garments worked this way. This, you know, you worked on the back neck. It's really cool. Uh, if you've not yeah, done- spent a long time with the Volition overview. Like, like that took- I did. That took a long yeah. time to write. Yeah almost as long as the pattern like figuring out <laughs> yeah, uh, and then remember we, we 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 made weird schematic things that i would never do schematics yeah. of piece of sections yeah. because it was such an unusual construction yeah but and then what you can do is so you're helping the knitter by giving the big picture and helping them and it, this becomes part of the as follows too because you're saying this is a a, a top-down sweater worked in the round you know this is the usual thing or this is a garment worked in pieces and sewn up or we've got some weird stuff going on right. here people, and this is going to be a ride right but you're like setting... Laura Nelkin like we're going to start here then we're going to yeah, go exactly. here then we're going to yeah. go here then we're going to go here then we're going to yeah. go here yeah exactly and then just for fun we're going to go back and then do the thing and yeah <laughs> like but you get to also the designer gets to say and dear knitter I'm assuming that you're familiar with these things this to be successful here's the skills you need because what it does is it gives the knitter the opportunity to either quickly study up or say oh, okay yeah i know those these this is going to be a piece of cake or oh okay that's something i need to do some reading before i like so yeah so though but yeah. read read the yeah. intro and the yarn info that i want to see i want to see one or two sentences that just says if you need if you're relying on a really specific quality in a particular yarn say that in the introduction and this is where i'm going to wave this this particular design relies on a really specific quality of the yarn this is one of these shawl striping um so you've seen self-striping sock yarn yeah so that is <laughs> that, one yarn. yeah this that, is okay. one yarn it's one of those that's dyed to make thick stripes when you make a shawl and because I'm being, I'm being perverse, you love me, right? What I'm doing is I'm doing it as a cowl. So instead of the stitch count changing, I'm letting the stripes change. How much, like, I love it. 
I love it. I've designed a shawl that goes with it. If you yeah. had short color repeats, that yeah. you're not going to get that. Yeah, exactly. So this is one, and I know, like, this is absolutely one, and this is why I wanted to show it, where I'm going to describe, heck, yeah, like, this relies on specific qualities of the yarn. So right. I'm going to describe that in my patent intro. I'm Whereas, also going to, yeah, write a tutorial this? about how to use leftovers for this, too. Oh. But I just like the accentual stripe quality to this. Like, like, the last color, by the way, is purple. It's amazing. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Whereas this, there's like, not, like what would I say about, this is a four ply Aran weight yarn. Like, I mean, I, anyway, so there, we have a ton of comments here and questions. Uh, so sure. I'm gonna, um, so we had a uh, gauge, someone said, um, I wish every designer would write schematics the way Vogue and Rowan does. So schematics are really interesting because this is a, my, I have a lot of frustrations over schematics now. And this brings me to something about one of the, the the things that I said earlier about people that are trying to eliminate what Kate does for a living. So, Masters. and and okay, I got to say this about what this one does for a living. Two things. Thing one is now there's a new, so at first there was a trend where everyone hung out a shingle and called themselves a designer, no matter what their training was, no matter what their background was, and they were handwriting a pattern. And then um, this trend of test knitters came along. So let me say this about test knitting. Now it's, there's such a misunderstanding and people are saying, well, I only do something that where every size is test knit. Well, then don't knit any of my patterns. Because if you actually know how to do sweater grading, you don't need someone to test out to see if your pattern works. Now you get into this whole other thing of people are using test knitters to eliminate tech editors. And they're taking advantage of people. Very much, because they're asking them to do something that you are paid to do. Exactly. Yep. So we get all, so this price inclusivity discussion started and, and there's a lot of things about it that are going to be decisions that we have to make as knitters. One of them is this whole idea of some of the quote unquote solutions of, well, the designer should have test knitters knit it in every size in four or five different yarns. Okay, so either I'm getting free labor or I'm paying for all those samples, in which case your, my pattern is now gonna cost you $900. Yeah. The, another solution was the designer should knit the garment out of three or four different yarns and have all of them photographed. Does anyone know how photo shoots work? You're, you pay by the sample. So again, there's a lot of, there's a lot of issues that I have with this concept yep. of how we need to solve a yep. problem that also comes from something that I'm going to quote uh, Eleanor Roosevelt, no one can ever make you feel, what is it, uh, um, insecure without your knowledge or consent or something like that. I just butchered it. But I wrote today, I started knitting when I was an off-Broadway stage manager making peanuts. I knit patterns out of Vogue. All the patterns were in expensive yarn. It never occurred to me to feel excluded by the fact that I was gonna hop on the subway, go to Smiley's Yarn in Queens and buy super, super cheap yarn. Mm -hmm. It never occurred to me that that pattern was excluding me. Now, that is not to say I'm discounting people who feel that way, but I'm saying we are all responsible for our own feelings in a certain way. And I don't think designers are trying to exclude knitters Unless, and this was discussed, mm -hmm. a knitter's response to asking for help with a yarn sub is if you want it to look right, use the yarn I suggested. Yeah, that's, that's not helpful. No. <laughs> And it's also frankly wrong. I think I, I, I just cannot think of a project where there is absolutely only one yarn that would work. 
And I'm going to wave this around again. This is an example where, yeah, this is on level tied to a really specific yarn. But on another level, it's not because you could do amazing things with leftovers, right? Yeah, like someone just did this concept. one. Yeah. Stripes. Yeah. This is yeah. a self striping yarn, but someone just posted it on Ravelry with scraps. And she said, yeah, yeah, yeah there was a lot of ends to weave in, but it was fun. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I like. Yeah, it's uh, it. This is it's frustrating because the other piece and that some designers have talked about this and that, you know that what yarn we use is often a business relationship. Yes. When I said at the beginning, Patty and I get to get you know we we are very excited to see the mailman because the mailman often delivers yarn. Yeah, off that yarn that's arriving, we may not have put money down for it, but we may have an agreement with the yarn company we're not providing money for the yarn we're providing our labor and our promotion right. and so we're there's a business agreement so i can't tell you to use right brand b because brand a provided the yarn to me under the understanding and i agreed as a designer that i would use brand a yarn and i would talk about brand a yarn so and that's a getting lot of, in, yeah to how yeah. the sausage is made yeah because if yeah. we have to buy our yarn now, again, you're talking about an increase in pattern price, and yep, now yep. we're going to get into a price inclu uh, inclusive conversation when it comes to our patterns. Yeah, Now, that conversation happened last year, and the irony of that is there was one designer who was lauded, 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 lauded for fixing the problem by creating um, pattern codes, coupon codes, these pay what you can, pay full price if you can, use this coupon to get 25% off, use this coupon to get 50% off. Now, when I looked her up, I laud her for a different reason. Her full price sweater patterns are $18. So this designer that was so lauded as being so price inclusive because she includes pattern codes to get the pattern at 50% off, mm. Her pattern at 50% off is a dollar more than mine. Yep. yep. So those parts of those elements of our business get lost. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but, you know, when I do sweater, my, the video sweater classes, then I want the yarn to be a, a lower price point because I want, because they're teaching patterns. Yeah. I want it. So North Light Fibers which is a yarn from a micro mill, a family owned business, a spectacular yarn, unbelievable. Yeah. I had made um, a sweater. They're lovely uh, people too, it's oh, perfect. Yeah. The best, the best. And Atlantic is um, a very special yarn. And I've never seen a yarn that when you take it out of the hank and you hang it on your hand, it hangs perfectly straight. Normally you take it and there's like a little half twist. This yarn is so balanced that unblocked and blocked, the fiber looks exactly the same. I've never worked with a yarn like this. It's spectacular. Yep. But I contacted Sven and Laura and I said, I'd like to do this sweater as a knit along, but I feel like I need to um, present a yarn substitution, but I wouldn't do that without your consent. And Sven was like, of course, d um, my, no worries, which is extraordinary. Because yeah. he said, I know that ours, our, you know, our, our, our yarn is, a, is a, a higher end purchase and not everyone will be able to do it. So I had classically Liberty wool, good standard workhorse, but, you know, um, but that, but I asked permission. Yep. You know? Yeah. 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 Um, and it's, you know, for me also, it comes down to, it's like when you're looking at a pattern picture, I look at it as in the same way that when I'm looking at a home decorating magazine, right? Which obviously I probably should because you should see my office, but you know, and you look at these things and you're going to see, you're going to see something really beautiful because, and it was chosen because it will look great in the photographs and it will, it's chosen for business reasons. Cause you know, when you see stuff that's in a home decorating magazine, right? Like, you know, that there's, business going on behind those choices right they're not I'm not 
as a, you know, I'm not just going into a store and saying, I want to use that. Will you give it to me for free for the photos? There's business going on there. Right. Like when you watch HGTV, it's not a, it's not like a crazy coincidence that they buy everything from Wayfair. Oh, they really like Wayfair. Yeah. So yeah, there's a whole load of stuff there. So, and, and if I can just redirect, because I have to say this, I have to say this will bug me if I say the other reason that replacing tech editors or only using test knitters for a pattern is problematic is because what you yeah. don't get is you don't get someone looking at usability and ease of reading and you may I'm get glad. oh yeah you may get each size fits but you don't get does the pattern no. make sense anyway, and, and okay the other we, thing i was going to say about about tech editors and then i then yeah. i distracted myself as i said you the, you know there was the thing of yeah. anyone hanging up a shingle and calling themselves designers yeah. now People are like, oh, tech editing, that sounds like a fun career. I'm going to call myself a tech editor, also with no training. So now, even if someone says this pattern was tech edited, but bah who, bah who, who tech edited yeah. it? So yeah, like there's a tech editor that used to work um, for Knit Style. No, oh, Char oh uh, Char uh, Charlotte, oh, she's real famous. Wiggle. No, yeah. Charlotte. No, there's yeah. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she ha and and you know I I had uh, emailed the uh, no it was creative knitting, and I loved her. I loved her so hard. I loved her because she pushed back, and I I wrote I, I was at TNNA and I said to the editor, oh can I can I talk about the tech editor? And she's like, oh, I know I know a lot of people have problems with how many notes she has. And I was like, they do. That's not what I was going to say. I, I wasn't yeah. gonna say that at all. I was gonna say, uh, I, I had some sweater where it was um, reverse shirt tail, like I did for Tortola. Yeah. And, and she typed back and she said, you know, your join works. It's, I'm not saying it's not, I'm not saying it's wrong. It, it absolutely works the way you wrote it. But if you, <laughs> and I know that's also how you knit it. So I know you might not wanna change it, not wanna like lie, but can you see that if you did this row first and then you could join over here, do you, do you see how much simpler that would be? And I was like, uh, I didn't see that. <laughs> that is simpler both to knit and to write. So I, you know, I didn't see that. And I, that's cause I was, I'm right here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So uh, professional tech editors cannot be replaced with sample knitters and they can't be replaced with anyone who says, I'm a good knitter, I could, I could tech edit. But there's some yeah. other, so, so the thing about, um, so someone said, I wish everyone would write schematics. And so this is something that is, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. is about tech edited patterns is, I don't know if you're noticing this, Kate, I'm seeing a lot of schematics now with measurements that should be there that aren't there where I have no idea, like, and this is a lot in, in the round pieces where like it's top down seamless, but I'd still like to know the length of that sleeve. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Yeah. I'd still like Absolutely. to know the neck width. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to have to get it, but yes, I could read through the pattern, find the numbers, yeah, to the calculator neck, out and, and yeah. divide by the gauge, but yeah, should I have to, mm. or should it be there? Yeah, well, and uh, uh, here's something I pr promote as well. I tell designers that I th think they should make simplified schematics available for viewing before purchase. I don't I want you to give the secret sauce away, but I'd love it because a lot of the time with a garment in particular, right, with a garment in in particular and I'll use this dress as an example I bought this I wanted to buy it when I saw it online but I couldn't figure out how the eh, I can't do this the chair won't let me but I couldn't figure out because it's got a really quite voluminous sleeve how the sleeve was shaped and how the armhole was cut uh, and I had to go see it in person I couldn't see it from the pictures online so I I broke lockdown to buy a dress, but that's a different story. Um, it was on sale in my defense. Um, but ultimately, sometimes there's some additions before yeah. purchase so the uh, nature I, can decide. I do words and make sure to instruct the photographer. So the reason yeah, I don't want to post a free schematic is if it's simplified, 
then the knitter could get the idea of like, oh, well, that's a really bad schematic. That's missing a lot of- Oh, fair. Yeah, pressure, no, and that's, right? that's a valid point. And yeah. if it's full, I'm literally giving my pattern away because a yeah, schematic oh, absolutely. Yeah. is your pattern. Yeah, it um, is. Uh, you know, we were about Japanese knitting patterns earlier. They're basically exactly. just schematics and a gauge. But yeah, it's an interesting thing, but just making sure the knitter has that additional information. So there's a balance there, but it, you know, it's it's an interesting one. But yes, yeah, schematics, they do need to be detailed because it's our way of virtually trying garment on. How do I know it's if it's going to fit me? It's our blueprint of what yeah. we're building. Yeah, I mean, you absolutely. Can, you know, um, by yeah. the way, Gail Zucker, who is, who, you know, she Love asked her. specifically, are there, uh, uh, sorry, I'm like, we're talking, I forget you guys were here. Gail Zucker is a, a photographer, brilliant photographer. So Gail in her intake form asked, please list any details that you want to make sure that I shoot. So like for Volition, I really asked like, please shoot the back that shows how that shoulder scene comes. So she, I think that's really great that she asks that. Yeah, like, why you want a knitter as a photographer? Oh, I didn't. Yes. Yeah, or a, a yeah, or a, like as your stylist, you either need a knitter as a photographer or as your as your stylist, so you can say I that. I once had something come back to me that had been photographed inside out because the knitter was not a like a photographer was not a knitter. Oh yeah, there's a We've famous there's a famous Vogue yeah. one that was photographed upside down. It, it, it's and I knit it. I, I knit it back when I was a knitter, uh, and, and and I couldn't figure it out. And it was only photographed one way, but then the 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 pattern note said you could wear it either way. And I thought this was so baffling. And I talked to the editor at the time, Adina Klein, and she said, "Okay, full disclosure, I photographed it upside down." And then we had to add that note. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like, okay, good to know. Yeah, everybody's um, getting our, the, the dirty industry secrets here. Yeah, well, what other questions? So are, PJ yeah. said, one thing that could be helpful is information about the yarn construction. A pattern designed with a woolen spun yarn could generate very different results if knitted yeah. with superwash merino. So one thing about superwash that like, I, I in the realm of yarn sub, that also has to do with the actual fiber because subbing superwash for non-superwash whole different ball game right because i'll often if i'm knitting on superwash i will often knit that to a purposefully dense yep so that it's not going to peel nothing and you know superwash was great for this because of how springy and bouncy it is and stretchy but um but yeah i get like i've had a couple people on instagram say that about construction and I guess the only time I've specified yarn construction is when it's not just like a four ply. I'll say this is a chainette. Um, but if it's just like a, yeah. Yeah, it's an know. interesting thing, right? For me, I would say again, and we risk overburdening. I think yes. we need to be clear when we re when the design really relies on a specific property of the yarn. Yeah. So if woolen spun is crucial to the behavior of the fabric, then heck yeah, we should be listing that. Yeah. Right. Or like if it's a fair isle knitter or an intarsia design where the fuzziness of the yarn helps smooth the curves, they might say, you know, yep. in order to get a curve that looks like a curve, don't use superwash, which is going to look like, you know, little V's. Yep. This is an interesting one. Um, Marcia says a lot of ball bands won't commit to one gauge. Years ago, they did. Stupid change, not an improvement. This is complicated. This mm -hmm. one's complicated because it may seem on the surface like a stupid change, but it's there for a reason. And, I, and, and this is where, I guess this is where I get frustrated as a teacher at what we bring to the table and how knitters used to love to like experiment with yarn and see what it does. Yeah. There are ball bands that have that range uh, where it says like 16 to 18 stitches per four inch on a US six through eight. Yep. That yarn might have like a ton of bounce to it or loft. It might be one of those yarns where might be a chain at or it might be like a two ply where you put your, your fingers 
And if you pull, like the girth of that yarn, yeah, like wildly changes and the distance between your fingers change. So how you knit that up and how you compress it, you're gonna get two legitimate gauges. Mm totally legitimate stockinette that you can't put your finger uh finger through gauge yeah yeah it's kind of complicated right because i love that we're getting that additional information but it's yeah yeah no good i mean there's there. both patty and i are like sorry no good answer this is unusual that we both are like yeah. well here's another industry secret one of the tips on my yarn sub tip sheet that's in my Ravelry group says to look at the, the designs that the yarn company has paid to make in that yarn because it's going to tell you what the yarn manufacturer, well, not manufacturer, the yarn company that bought it from a mill believes yep. that yarn is good for so if you look and all the projects are washcloths and dishcloths and market bags and toys, you might go, oh, this might not be a garment cotton. So that's one tip. But the other is I do read RAV notes because I get asked all the time. Um, I don't have a ball of Nina over here. It's over here. You know, like, how could that yarn be listed on the ball band as worsted weight? And sometimes I'm like, it's not, mm. it's just not like, I don't know. I don't know where that's coming from, but you read, yeah. you read people's notes and it says this really knits up more like a DK or that, you know, so like, that's really helpful. Yeah. Um, you know, felted tweed is really close to sport. Yeah. Right. Just, but yeah, it's really, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really closer to sport than a DK, but you know, we yeah. call it DK, but, um, but the Rowan ones, the Rowan ones were always off anyway. I remember going into a yarn store early in my sort of career as a knitter. And, uh, I was asking about a Rowan yarn and why it was described as a four ply and the gauge was this and the woman, and she was lovely. She kind of looked at me and she said, <sighs> well, and it was great. Yeah. And, and it's just a yeah. super industry secret from my yarn, my yarn company days is when it's an older yarn and it's been around for many years and there are tons of patterns already written for that yarn, okay, with the yarn company and the mill closes and they find another mill to manufacture that yarn and it's not exactly the same anymore, which happened to a yeah. yarn in a yarn company I worked for, mm. they don't rewrite the patterns because they already exist. Yeah. But it doesn't right. really knit up to that gauge anymore. Speaking to the Canadians, the Daily Departed Mission Falls 1824 cotton. <gasps> oh God, I love Mission that yarn. So much. No, all of the Mission Falls, actually, the whole line, like the wool and the cotton. What a great yarn. And it was briefly okay. brought back to life. And it was a good yarn, but it wasn't the same yarn. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Can I tell can I tell you my embarrassing 1820 uh, Mission Falls story? Okay, go so on. Do you know do you know uh, uh, uh did you ever watch the episode of Friends where um uh uh Phoebe's pregnant so she can't fly to London for the wedding and so they're trying to make it up to her and they say like well we could have a beautiful picnic at Central Park and she's like that is not the same as going to London we might as well just I mean going to Central Park is not the same we might as well just all hang out here at Central Park. <gasps> hey, I just got that. Okay. So I'm working in a yarn store. I work there. I work there. I manage the yarn store. And someone comes in and they have a pattern for Aaron Waite yarn. The gauge is 18 stitches over 24 rows. They'd like to know what yarns they could use. I look up the yarn because I don't just go from the pattern gauge. I look up the original yarn. I see, yes, the yarn gauge and the pattern gauge are in fact the same because they're not always. And I'm showing her every yarn in the store that she could use. And I get to uh, Mission Falls and I say, this is a classic Aaron Waite. Um, this is 18 stitches and 24 rows. This is Mission Falls, 1824. Hey, I just got that. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the name of the yarn was not the year it was invented. It's the I game. thought it was. Yeah, exactly. 
Yeah. Because there's a live was, brand yarn that has a year. Yeah. Uh, it was LB1828. And that was the year that yarn came out. That was the year the yarn yeah. company came out. But, um, oh my God. Yeah. So I, yeah. Hey, I just got that. Um, okay. Now, Marilyn says, my pet peeve, give actual yardage, not skeins for fancy yarn. This is, an, this is more complicated than you think it is. Yeah, you know what, this is one and I feel like, and so other dirty secret is like, I go on Ravelry and look at discussions people are having about stuff. And there was, there was something where my name got mentioned and I didn't, I didn't, you know, I wasn't creeping on it, but my name got mentioned and somebody brought it to my attention. And they seemed really surprised that I was surprised about this. Because knitters were saying, I want to see an absolute yardage number. So right. if there's four sizes, I want to see a uh, 1,000 yards, 1,025 yards, 1,050 yards, and 1,075 yards, or whatever those numbers are for those sizes. And I was like, oh, oh, oh no, that is scary. Yeah. And I get why. Dangerous. I, right. I completely get why. And the, the example, so I asked the question, like I had a really good Twitter conversation about this. And a lot of people were like, well, I don't get why you, like, why is this hard? It's like, well, hang on, hang on. Because I get it. If it's a, a giant, and I was at a stage life where I was buying yarn from the big chain stores and I'd buy the jumbo saver balls, right? Yeah. For a good reason. They're amazing, right? Yeah, and like if I'm making a hat, yards. right? If I, I'm buying 500 yards to make a hat, but I also know that I can probably make more than one hat. But if the patent says for a hat, buy one 500 yard skein, right? If you're making a substitution, um, you want to know, does it really use, is that a heck of a hat or does it just use a portion of that? So that made a ton of sense to me. That makes an absolute sense And you sense could make a note that like, like exactly. that, uh, one of the hat, uh, I did a hat mitten set out of the big, yeah. the big put up of yeah. um, Blue Sky uh, wool stock. You know how it comes yeah. two, two put ups, but yeah. one of them is that this is, this is wool stock and they yeah. gave me the giant put up and I had oh, a leftover yeah. one. Yeah. And I made a hat and mittens out of it, but they're yeah. two separate patterns. But the pattern says, note, you'll have enough yarn to make both the hat and the mittens. Exactly, yeah. And that's a situation where, and if you go back to the blog post, which Patty will post a link to, where I say, it's a good idea to post that it will use as a fraction of the skein. But pre presenting an exact number is incredibly dangerous because we do, Patty and I are covering our butts here because I don't want you to only buy 1,025 yards. Or check your stash and see, yeah. ooh, I have 1,000 yards of this old yarn. Because they're, those numbers are estimates. And even if we match gauge, they can, the yardage used can be slightly different. So the reason we're, we're doing it by number of skeins is so that there's an inherent degree of budge in that number. Now, there is absolutely no way if I tell you that it needs, if I'm grading out a, a garment pattern and I say, you know, it uses the sizes across the sizes, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 skeins or whatever, there's definitely a, a fudge factor in that. We're definitely including, like, I always work out my yardage and then I multiply it by like 1.1. 1 .1 just so yeah, I have a 10%. There. I do a 10% over. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just so there's, and we're, yes, we are including enough to swatch. Thank you very much. But, and the number, the, what, how many inches it, do you leave as a yarn tail when you see, right. when you join so a new, I don't, new ball? I don't want someone to take that absolute number as a promise because I right. can't afford the lawyer. You. Now, um, now joke, I, joke, right? But yeah, but no, it's well, scary. Let's get that that's scary. So and the information yeah. is there for you because what I teach in the, one of the things I say in Secrets of Yarn Substitution is say it says, um, I need five for the extra small, five for the small, five for the medium, blah, blah, blah. Now I'm knitting the small. And I do my yarn substitution. I take the total number of yardage needed. I divide it by the, the yardage of the yarn I'm subbing. And it says that for the yarn I'm subbing, I need 6.1 balls. And, and I would say, okay, now, do you buy seven or do you buy six? Well, it depends. You have some clues here. If I'm knitting the small, and after all, the medium, use the same number of balls, then I might roll the dice and say six. But if yeah. I'm knitting the medium, 
and the large needed another ball, I'm going to get seven. Yeah. So, but the yeah. one, the one point about the yardage that, that I, I was like, yep, I'll give you that one is for color work. When oh, heck said yeah. That like, say this didn't have black trim, but the only yeah. black used was in here. Then I might say, and, and say, for instance, this wasn't Cascade 220, inexpensive yarn, but mm. a very expensive giant put up. I might yep. say, uses approximately, you know, whatever. I yep. might give a range for that. So there's a shelf of sock books, because of course I have at least one shelf of sock books. And there's one particular sock book, one of the first books I bought, and it had this beautiful color work sock in it. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to learn in it, because you got to play with like stranded color work. And there were some color details, like there was a, this neat colored cast on, and there were some, oh, it was, it's beautiful. And I went into the yarn store with the book and I ended up having to buy seven skeins of sock yarn to get, I don't know whether it was that I was committed or I should have, but I bought seven skeins of sock yarn because it told me to buy seven skeins of sock yarn. One of the colors, it was the, the adorable colored cast on, it was literally the cast on round. I could have used a scrap, right? Two of the others, I was using like less than 20 yards of them. I was just like, and you want to talk about financial accessibility again, I didn't, that's a lot of money. That was three of the seven skeins of yarn. That was three of them I didn't need to buy. And in fact, I probably, what I should do, because there were two shades of green, by the way, as well, it was like, yeah, that was designed by someone who has a really significant stash. That was some, I'm going to turn the camera here who has that kind of a stash, right? <laughs> right, that yeah, was, I'm giving my secrets away here. Yeah, that's my <gasps> Doctor Who scarf. Yay. I recognize that. My mom part. made that. Yeah, so this is an accessible yarn. And that's why my mom made this for me. Oh, I didn't know that. That's in your headshot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay. I love you guys enough that I'm putting it on, even though it's like a million degrees. Oh, yeah. in here. It's a million so, degrees. Here. But so, yeah. So, but so I was like, as a newer knitter, I was super angry about that. Cause like, how dare you tell me I need to buy a whole skein of yarn for 10 yards. So that one, that Probably. suggestion for color work when it is like one little blip. Yeah. I think yeah. you could safely estimate for every size it's this to this, but for a sweater. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to do it. Not going to do it. And, yeah, and no, exactly. Here, exactly. Um, oh my God. Yes. When the designer writes, um, Ashley wrote three skeins of X yarn. Then I have to search, look it up, do the math for the yardage. Again, that comes back to then the designers, not a real professional designer. If they weren't listening. Yeah, Cause it. it's a three skeins of, you know, fancy yarns, fine Merino uh you know 200 yards per 150 gram skein right and what the and, and yeah 49 this 15 like all the yard exactly you know, all the fiber because content. when i first started teaching knitting i used to t have to tell people to bring a calculator to class but you've got one right so carol, carol asked why do uh why do only some patterns have you swatch in a pattern stitch not just stockinette, should there always be swatching in both? Not, there's, there's no always in knitting, there's no crying mm -hmm. in baseball. So for instance, just crying why in knitting, would I swatch in stockinette for this bad boy? Right. I yeah. wouldn't. What I'd want to know was what was the stockinette gauge of classical eight song so that I can be in the ballpark. Yep. And remember vintage patterns that used to not have the pattern gauge only stock in yep. it yeah in the gauge class i teach how to ignore that and find like okay yep. let's look at the number of stitches of the chest let's divide yep. it by the number of inches now i'll have the pattern gauge yeah and i can ignore swatching and stock in yep. it yeah and this i mean this is all garter so no need to swatch in in stock in right for that either so um what? and you know and gorgeous number over patty's shoulder same thing swatching cables the way i say is stockinette stitch gets you the yarn pattern stitch gauge gets you the needles and i bomb right. on that and i mean the thing is the thing that i don't love 
is when a design has um, both like multiple stitches and they give you multiple gauges and a designer only swatches the stockinette and then figures I'll match it. Matching, if you're doing a yarn sub based on its construction, A, maybe you match stockinette gauge, but won't match pattern gauge, but also this is our time to try a yarn out. So maybe it's not about gauge, but that I didn't buy, and I hear this from knitters all the time, I didn't bother swatching a lace or a cable because I matched the gauge. And then I did the pattern and I don't like the way the lace or the cable looks in that yarn. Yeah, yeah. Because swatching is about more than gauge. It's like, yeah. you know, pouring it a glass of Chardonnay and dating it and saying like, what do you want to be, you know? Cause you want like, you know, some people might love the rustic look of a two ply for yeah. a cable and someone else might say, ah, oh, that's not my jam. I wanted like a more sophisticated yeah. definition. Yeah. Well, one of my simple examples from early in my knitting career, I was making a baby sweater for an Irish friend, like some a couple who were Irish are expecting their first baby. I'm like, Aaron knit baby sweater. I found this gorgeous pattern. I bought the yarn based on math. Oh, I matched the gauge. I matched the color. It was that beautiful warm winter white. And then I, when I started knitting, it was like I could have scrubbed pots with it. And apparently you don't put stuff like that on a baby. So they tell me, I don't know. So yeah, exactly. So another That was always hard in the yarn store when I used to work in a fancy yarn store in the West Village. And people, would, people without children yeah. would come yeah, in yeah. and they'd want to buy the silk mohair or the cashmere for this baby gift that they were gonna knit. Well, the silk mohair is straight up dangerous. The, those little fibers, they, babies yeah. can, they, they get loose and babies can breathe them in. Yep. So I like, I literally wouldn't sell it. I, mm. I said like, that's, I, I really, I can't. Yep. That. And the cashmere is the gift that keeps on giving work because you have to hand wash it. Yep. So that's crazy pants. Um, Ashley said, I never use uh, the pattern yarn. A lot of patterns I buy use indie dyed yarns from the US. Um, and I, I'm actually trying to reduce my carbon footprint so no flying yarn. Oh, oh, so you're, you're uh, Ashley doesn't live in the US, I guess. But there's, so th this is the thing. So there were three prongs, hence my three Instagram yeah. pros that I wanted to just, uh, yesterday I talked about my own business model, but that my business model isn't everybody's. So I offer for the knit alongs, lower priced yarns. And lately I've been offering two different yarns for every video sweater class at two different price points. I thought that was, uh, that was really popular. But I said, that's because I, I want it to reach new knitters. But does that mean I'm never going to publish in beautiful hand dyed yarn or that there's anything wrong with publishing in beautiful hand dyed yarn. No, there is not. This is Anzula. Um, but the other mm, two prongs, yeah. the one, one is the teacher prong, which is the idea of us listing four yarns and why I'm against that ha doesn't have to do with contractual obligations because maybe I'm self-publishing. I want a knitter to want to own their craft and, and be comfortable learning about things and digging in and not just yep. give me information, give me. Give well, me. and those four yarns, you list four, they're gonna get discontinued too. No yarns well, not are a, eternal. Not so only that, that, but like now I list four wool yarns. Yeah. Well, what about the vegans? Like, you know, so where does, I don't know. Yep. I, I yep. get it. There's if, the slippery slope, man. Yeah, it is. And for me, it comes down to the fact that we are not in choosing yarn. It is not a statement that you can only use that yarn. And I think that that needs to be understood. If, if we were making, if we were saying you must only use, it only works if you do X, then yeah, heck yeah. That's could be potentially ex excluding people. That'd be problematic. That is problematic for a whole bunch of ways. But what we're actually saying is we used this. This is what the property, this is why this yarn works. This is 
Uh, Patty chose this because it's a chainette. The chainette really works for this design because blah. I used this because blah. Look for something that does something similar because if nothing else, you're at some point the yarns are going to be get going to discontinued because no yarn is forever, including Mr. Falls 1824 and classic elite lip. Whoa, oh, what oh. a great yarn that was! I mean, this table is full of classic elite, and actually, I'm I'm still struggling. Speaking of yarn sub, I I think I just have to re knit um, Costa Maya in a different look because yeah. I cannot find something similar to Firefly. Oh. People always ask me like Firefly was really unique, but yeah. the, the, oh, yeah. so I want, I, I, you know, I, I think so often we come from this, like, well, this is an easy thing. Just fix it. But there were a lot of things that made me uncomfortable. Not, not the least of which is I don't want to shame anyone. So even the statement of who is going to pay $400 for a sweater kit, that's ridiculous, that's stupid, shames the person that had been saving up and really wanted to treat themselves to this yarn. And now they feel like, oh, I guess I'm an idiot. I guess I'm, so it's not necessary. It's not necessary to shame anybody yep. for their yarn choices you know but tomorrow's post is going to be all about the trades that we make what are the trades and again not right or wrong yep but i want us to understand why big box yarns are inexpensive because they're milled in china by people that don't make a lot of money because there's money is being saved on the u.s end by not paying uh, always their workers benefits by, you know, there's a lot of reasons that yarn is inexpensive. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not judging anyone that uses that yarn, but we have to make those decisions. Yep. Yep. And Zool is there more expensive because it's all American made. It's all American milled. It's all yep. hand dyed. It is um, uh, run a female owned company who she chooses to pay her workers very well. Yep. I feel good about that. Yep. Yep. Sorry. And You're there right. have been absolutely been times in my life when I've been buying the biggest box of yarns because it's all I've been able to afford. Oh, and nice. and that those are the choices. And there's the input into that. And the, the input is that it's important to me to buy yarn and this is yarn that's available to me. And so I, I buy it and I get to knit and I get to create because ultimately what this is about too for me what this comes back to this is for joy we do this for pleasure and I want people to have a good time doing that now that doesn't mean I think everything should be easy because I love a good challenge like I enjoy and I love I love processors I love people who you know I met someone who who knit her, her entire way through you know, the Knitter's Almanac, just because she wanted to learn all of the different techniques. And she said, oh, I don't wear any of it. But, you know, it's the Julie sure and process. Julia of knitting, right? Yeah. Process knitters, and they're great. Yeah, yeah. And I love a process knitter. And she gets her joy from that. And other people get away from being able to show off all of their beautiful work or whatever. Ultimately, this should be a pleasure. And we should remember that, too. And I, yeah, we shouldn't be shaming anybody. And we shouldn't be you know, I don't want to make this hard on people. No, but we should, we should love our craft enough to want to invest in learning about it. And I, I yeah. think part of the shaming is also shaming designers and telling us what we should be doing, but without the natural trade-off of, okay, but then next I'm going to get shamed for price inclusivity when I start charging what I would need to charge to do all the things that you're telling yeah. me to do now. And there's a, a, almost every designer I know feels this way and no one's speaking up because we're, you know, you don't want to like go down that road, but I'm, I'm yeah. saying it. Yeah. It is, it's enormously complicated and people are frustrated and right now people are frustrated on lots of reasons. Like this is, a, this is a hard year, I think, for so many reasons. I think, you know, we're having a hard time living through things too. And so I also think, and not, this is not to dismiss anybody's concerns, but- That's why we shouldn't easy. make it harder on each other. 
Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And yeah. And my ice cream yesterday, when I got it out of the freezer, we'd left it in the upstairs freezer as opposed to in our basement deep freeze. And the ice cream was soft. And I just, I don't like soft ice cream. And I just had that moment where it's like, ah! hold on, hold on. It's just ice cream. Right. So yeah, it's just knitting. Yeah. Think, so let's not make it harder. Really, anybody. Yeah. yeah, we are making it harder on each other. And I, I think that there are some, I, I really appreciated that someone wrote on my Instagram post today that it gave them perspective, a different perspective because she had a pattern and she was very frustrated that it just said, now steak. And I said, because I used the example of, um, you know, because I got, I got the email calling me a gatekeeper because I went above and beyond like answering all this, you know, I said, well, I'm not a mm. gatekeeper for not just telling you these are the yarns you should buy. Instead, I made a video about the yarn properties. I made a yarn substitution tip. I list all the information. And then I said, I don't know your budget, what color you like, whatever. So why don't you pick out two or three examples, come back to the RAV page, let me know what you found and I'll give you my two cents. But I said, if a, if a recipe listed the ingredients and then said, you know, there was an instruction that said fold in the eggs and there wasn't a video link to say what is folding in the eggs. No one would say, well, that person's a gatekeeper because in cooking we think, oh, well, that's a skill. I need to learn it. Uh, so I don't know where we lost that, right? Uh, that's what's upsetting to me as a teacher. I want us to want to learn. I want us to love our craft enough to want to learn it. I, you know, I went to a book signing of Oda Lange. He's a, um, a, a chef. Oh, man. And uh, he, someone said, you know, I find it really frustrating that you don't write um, the, uh, a gluten-free version of each recipe. Could, would you consider doing that? And he said, no, because then I'd have to also write the low sodium version and the vegan version and the vegetarian version and the I'm allergic to peppers version. And the, these are me writing down my recipes. Go and God bless, make yeah. your substitutions. Yeah, yeah. So I, 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 yeah, I want, I want, I'm there for you. Ask the question. Be curious, and I'm here for you. Yeah, because we want to help. We want to give you a nudge, because your grandma or your auntie or your local yarn shop may not be available to give you a nudge. We'll give you a nudge, but there's only so much that we can do. You need to, as knitters, be able to take that nudge and run with it. And, and yeah. And sometimes, like, the easier thing for me to do on Ravelry, when someone says whatever, quite, like, I don't understand this, da, 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 it would be to just answer it and that would take one exchange but someone finally posted on ravelry i finally get why you why why you won't answer but you make me figure it out myself and come back because i'll always say tell you what take a look at it again get it on your needles now read the words out loud to yourself i think you're reading something into it you're assuming x y and z so now now come on back and let me know after you've tried it, if you have any questions. Because now that person like owns it. Yep. Uh, but and anyway. has transferable skills, yeah. Transferable okay. skills. Let's see what other wonderful questions we have. Um, oh, so uh, uh, some patterns have a list of techniques required. Um, in I love that. Some, yeah. oh, so, sorry, she said the opposite. Some patterns only have a list after you purchase. Yeah. So. Kate's suggestion of listing them um, before is yep. really helpful. Many people yep. are saying, yes, yes, yes. That's really helpful. Yeah. Love the technique yep. list. I yep. still, I, I'm experienced, but I still want to know how fiddly a pattern is before I buy it. Well, because sometimes you may need something. I don't know about you guys, but the reason I'm knitting a garter stitch cowl right now is that the world is quite stressful and a garter stitch cowl is and you know with at the risk of oversharing I spent a few hours in emergency with my with a relative last week so a garter stitch cowl seems fitting everyone's fine now um but yeah sometimes we want something where I know that I can you know just you know relax 
Yeah, yeah, there's a lot. Of, so a lot of people are saying yes to the technique list. This, this one has really uh, hit a chord. Um, I also like the garment description of construction method for the garment to give me an idea of how much technical challenge you want to handle. Yeah. And you know what's you know what's really interesting? I find that the tags on Ravelry people don't really know about or use yeah. because I hardcore use them as a designer. I'll oh yeah do seamed bottom up blah, 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 and I hit them all. Yeah, it's take like, ages. Yeah, but then I'll often get is this knit in the round? And it's, t but so I, I think, I think I need to add more words instead of just the tags because mm -hmm. people are not using the tags. Yeah, maybe. They don't seem maybe. to notice them. Yeah, so maybe. Um, I put the YouTube link in my pattern notes as reference. Yeah, that's cool. Um, people should stop expecting to be spoon fed all the time. Agree. Uh, very true. And like Kate said, um, that she tends to design your, your first patterns, which should have more handholding. Yeah. But you can't all expect all designers to do that. And that's where, I don't know if you ever feel this way. I get, I feel guilty sometimes and feel the need to over explain. Like some, so my video sweater classes are a teaching pattern. Yep. So they're different and they include not only a ton of information, but because my business model is I design a handful of patterns a year that I structure teaching around and I heavily support. Yep. And when I, I get uncomfortable when I'm complimented by, by someone dissing another designer, by saying, mm -hmm. I so appreciate how you know, much support you give or how much, because I, and I asked so-and-so a question they never answered. Yeah. And so-and-so designs 20 times yeah. more than I do a year. They're profoundly prolific. Mm -hmm. They work for seven different magazines and yep. they publish books. And I feel like saying like, but whoa, <laughs> I could never do that if I could do that. Yep. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I think what this points to too is that every designer is different, just as recipe writers are different too. And Emily, as a knitter, you're going to find one that speaks to you. You're going to find a certain set of, I've got cookbooks that I cook from a ton, and I've got cookbooks that I don't cook from at all because the instructions just don't work for me. I have a cookbook. It's a good housekeeping illustrated cookbook. And it was given to me used, bought in the 1980s, I think. And I love it. And I much prefer it because someone get, you know, uh, like someone said, oh, you're learning to cook, the joy of cooking. I found where I was at my skill level, the joy of cooking didn't work for me, but the good housekeeping illustrated cookbook did. And so you find the one that works for you. Yeah. The pictures are hysterical now because in the copy it was in, taken in the 80s. So it's yeah it's got color photographs but the styling of them is and the color correction on them is just like that's supposed to look delicious a really uncomfortable shade of green for beans yes but yeah no it's but it's so it's you find what works for you right yeah oh love the scarf by the way we're getting comments love the scarf Yay. Um, I, I've, I've fallen so far behind i'm going to try to scroll through these really quickly okay all right see if there's well, while you're scrolling let me talk a bit about this scarf so my mom knitted this and it's made of a man-made fiber. It's made of a, a, a chain store yarn, okay? And I wore it for years and years and we designed it. It's actually this, we designed it on the needle in that, I mean, it's a scarf, right? It's knit one pearl, one ribbon. Could you imagine how much knit one pearl, one ribbon? She must reel with me, my mom. Cause I don't know about you, but knit one pearl, one ribbing is, well, it, it goes on a bit, right? She must really love me and she, and how long is that bad We boy? would go to the store. Oh, hey, it's big. It's real. I'm not, I have measured it in years and years. It's super long, right? So, and I, she would say, so yeah, that's folded in four, right? She would say, okay, what color do you want next? And I would occasionally go to the store with her and buy a skein of yarn. Um, and so the turquoise, yeah, the turquoise came later because it was new to the yarn company like new into the yarn store I'm like that's an amazing color I need that 
And she'd say, what color do you want to use? Want me to use next? What stripe do you want me to do next? And so I, I, I I'm, I'm terrible, but yeah, so she designed this. We did, and then the leftovers in the, uh, so yeah. Oh my God, this is so, there, I, I, I can't even find where I've left off. There's so many. Um, uh, uh, oh, well, here's one. Oh, Shannon asks, any suggestions for how one gets trained as a tech editor? So this is a good question. There's a long answer to this. Uh, there, hmm. Everybody who's interested in this should read my book about patent rights. I'm gonna, I'm a, oh, I shouldn't. Oh, I lost you for a second. I don't know if that's- uh, So I'll ask my book. Oh, there you Hi. are. So this- I'm losing you. So this talks about how to patent. So people should this as a tech editor. There are a couple of courses online. I would say that they are, there's one of them is more focused on this aspect of being a tech editor, which is important, but it's less about the techniques more about the business aspect. There is a course, I have to be careful here because it's gonna sound like I'm being mean, I'm not. Um, there's a, the, the Knitting Guild of America has a tech editing course. It's really tied to working for them for their style sheets. It doesn't mean it's a bad course, but it's really specific to their style sheet and their way of doing things. And people I know who have taken it say it kind of, it gives you a, a one piece of the puzzle. Um, this is something I've been thinking about, how to do some tech editing education. So watch this space. But I would say what I run to people is patent writing book. Test knitting is a huge piece of how to learn to be a tech editor. And reading what you do when you pattern. Reading all the patterns you can and being a test knitter, because what you see when you're a test knitter is you see patterns that are in their earlier stages. And you get to have an opportunity to sort of have an exchange and think about how information is presented. Read patterns, all sorts of patterns. Technical writing uh, experience is really important. And you really have to be comfortable and love math. And I had an email discussion with someone recently, and I still feel a smidge guilty about this in a way. And I hope that because uh, we ended up, the conversation ended up when I said to this person with all respect, I think your skills are better. You should be good. You should be doing layout and you should be doing copy editing and you should be doing graphic design. Because what she said to me, well, I love all of this stuff, but I'm really, I don't feel comfortable with the math. And you got to love math. You yeah. really do. <laughs> there's a, there's a really class that, that Edie Ekman uh, did um, called how to, and, and I think that's, it's an interesting, I mean, I guess in a way it's more for designers, but I, yeah, but that that's the element, uh, a lot of people focus on, I want to know how to grade. I want to know how to use Excel, yeah. I wanna, but how to say it like, okay, but then how do you say it? Yeah. Yeah. Cause the technical writing. So people who are really excel at technical editing, how I love math. Like if you do Sudoku pod in bed, we can talk, right? They love math. And I don't mean that to be unkind or dismissive. It's just something that, because there's a sort of a way, a way you logic through, through things, but there are people who are also sort of think about communication and they think about the ability of instructions and they think about, um, they think about, you've got to be able to put yourself in the knitter's shoes. So it's an interesting kind of skill set. And it's an interesting, and if these are things that you, you know, if you, when you're reading through recipes, think that's explained badly, much clearer if it were written this way, then you're someone who I think has the right sort of skill set and the right bent to be a technical editor. If someone is interested in this, I'm, there's a contact me form on my website, kateatherly.com. Drop me a note because I do have some, there's sort of a longer discussion here, but I would say if you are interested, please do it because there aren't enough of us, but know that it's a particular thing, you know, and it is, yeah, yeah. Wow, I can't, the, 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 this is the most, this is a really sparked um, 
some conversation. And I love that a lot of this has been conversation amongst themselves. So there's also a lot of like, oh, Marsha, you're absolutely right. Oh, Ashley, great point, which is awesome because yeah. I love that you guys are talking with each other. So there's um, uh, there's a lot of sharing of people's favorite um, video sources here. Um, so that's, that's really good. good. Um, good. There's a lot of interesting, I'm just trying to, ah, uh, my hands are getting sweaty, so I'm not, I'm not able to scroll. Um, fun thing is trying things out. I mean, one thing that, that I uh, hate about schematic, one thing that I, I find that was so helpful for me was screwing up a, a lot. And I write a, a blog series I used to write called Patty's Big Box and Knitting Fails. And some of that has some of my bad yarn substitutions, like including doing- I'm gonna just have, I'm, you talk, sorry. I oh, okay, you do you. Um, uh, doing a felted pattern with a, a, an acrylic yarn. So that was fun. That was a good um, bad yarn sub. Yeah. Uh, oh, North Light Fibers. Oh, did I? Yes, North Light Fibers. They're awesome. Um, go Tech Editors. Woohoo. Uh, okay, I'm just scrolling. Through. Oh my God, there's so many comments here. Um, uh, ease is net. Oh, now we're talking ease. So ease is necessary information. Yes, it is. but also wildly misunderstood. Yeah. So I ended up teaching a whole class on that called oh, ease yeah. Does It? Secrets of Sweater Construction yep. and Unraveling the Mysteries of Ease because I kept yep. getting, is the ease built in? I want a 40 inch sweater. So, and it says should be worn with two inches of ease. So am I knitting the 38 or the 42? Uh, yep. You're knitting the yep. 40. Um, yep. Oh, this is a, Alana, oh, this is a good one. Alana says, and the converse, you can tell what's wrong with the pattern by the way the model is standing in the photo or uh, in one case that I can think of lying down. So this is something I, I, I in my uh, 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 um, unlocking pattern secrets or reading between the lines what the pattern doesn't tell you, it's gone through several names. I say if the only picture of the neckline is, you know, like, then what happened is yeah, or that sample came in and there was something wrong with it. And a magazine is on a super tight editorial deadline. They can't cut it. The magazine has been laid out. So the person shooting it made it work on set. That's the, that's the little ugly secret, which yeah. is when pictures on Ravelry come in so handy. Yeah. Because I always say like when three people tell you you're drunk, lie down. So if you think that that neckline does not work and you read 10 different project notes and no one else had a problem with the neckline in the instructions, that's you. If you read 10 different projects and every single one says, well, I don't know how they got the neck to look like that in the photograph. So what I did was I did a needle size changer. What I did is I put in this series of decreases. Yep. That ain't you. Yeah. Then you, then you know for sure. Um, how can you tell on Ravelry if a pattern's been tech edited? Well, that's the problem. Yep. It, that's like saying mountain grown coffee. Back in the yep. day, any professional pattern was tech edited. I, so, so there are two pieces to this. First of all, do you know whether it's been tech edited, but do you know if the editor is worth, you that's, know, worth the, yeah. That's um, the second part of her sentence. She said, or it could be, uh, or if it was edited by someone good. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this is, again, read the Ravelry comments. I, I flippantly say sometimes never be the first person to knit at Pratton because you know you want to wait for the comments to see what people have said is this this one this one super clear makes all the sense in the world this is a good pattern there is some real weirdness and i don't think the instructions were complete for that sleeve i think there's something funny going on right or the numbers seemed way off right so i say it's not a perfect solution but flippantly yeah don't be the first person to, to and read the comments and follow the comments and some designers are starting to credit their tech editor. Um, ultimately, what I talk about is a reliable source. 
So yeah. if it's in a magazine, you know, and it could be a free magazine or if it's been a yarn, a larger yarn company, you know, sort of a, a yarn company with a good brand. If it's a designer you know is working as, at a professional level like Patty, absolute patterns are tech edited. My patterns are tech edited. You know, like a designer who is, you know, Amy Herzog's patterns are tech edited. Fiona Ellis's patterns are tech edited. These are people who are professionals who understand the value of it. So there's, you have to apply some qualifiers there. And Laura Nelkin, I use as an example all the time because Laura Nelkin is a perfect example of why finding a professional designer is more complicated now because it used to be back in the day, you'd say, well, you'd look to see uh, do they do a lot of magazine work? But that's not, now there are professional designers who've skipped right to the self-publishing land and haven't spent a lot of time in, and Laura's the perfect example. Yeah. Laura has a ton of knowledge and experience. She just chose to go, to really invest in self-publishing yep. and not yep. spend all those years in magazines. Yep. So it's more, it's, it's harder to find. Uh, someone wrote a question about why uh, why don't you just use wraps per inch? It's more accurate because it doesn't involve needles. It's really tricky though. I wrote a whole column about that. Oh, wraps about per inch. I find wraps per inch really hard. I'm not a spinner. Me too. Me too. And I find wraps per inch really hard because quick, can I find some yarn here? Oh, let's look at this loose end of yarn. I feel like I'm showing you guys my you know, because that loft how, or bounce. Yeah, like how, how squished. Tightly. Yeah, like how squished are they? And you could say, oh, well, no air. But I wrote a column for Twist Collective, and it's on my website, show yeah. four different yarns with the same WPI and me yeah. doing the wraps per inch. And every single one had different number than they gave. Because you could say like, oh, just do it with no air. But how, t how tightly are you doing it if you've got a chain at or that bouncy yarn or like a single ply? Yeah. You know, Woo! Right. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No. Does not, uh, yeah. That one I get it, and spinners always have a better sense of it. But that one, yeah. So, and Patty, and I should give you a warning. I'm gonna need to. Go I know. I know. I'm shortly. Yeah. No. Yeah. This has never no, been this long ever. I cannot believe we talked this long. I'm so sorry. No, um, this is good. I feel sorry that I I have to duck out f uh, for four, but um yeah no, this would this is not supposed to be this long and and we're gonna go and i just want to say um okay so first of all everyone say because i'm gonna finish reading the comments and i'm gonna stay on for five more minutes okay but everyone's thank the wonderful kate athlete um and i'm gonna yeah uh i'm gonna put in i think it's just all your usual deets right your website yeah, your, your face for everything right you can find yeah, your instagram absolutely. From there you can find that's like home base, right? Yeah, you can send me an email message. And there's, if you guys have questions, and if you do, if anybody wants to talk about the tech editing thing or whatever, you can always drop me a note through my website. I, I promise I will respond. So yeah, absolutely. Because yeah, I use, to me, this input's important because I look at it as a way to improve my patent writing and improve my technical editing. If I, you know, if, if people are saying, you know what, this would be better if, I'm like, okay, that's good input. So yeah. But this has been amazing. Thank you for it. I love it. Well, pa Patty and I got to hang out for a couple of hours and talk about our favorite topic. And apparently this has worked. It's cool. I can't believe, I, I cannot believe I kept you here this long. I'm so sorry. Okay, no, you, it's good. you go. I'm going to finish Thank reading you. these comments. And then I have to go because I, I have a meeting soon. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Okay. So I'm just going to read a couple more comments. Because um, there, uh, the, Suzanne wrote, a seasoned knitter uh, knows when to knit tighter because of pilling. Newer knitters don't. Is this something that should be mentioned in patterns? So here's the thing. That's again about looking up the stockinette gauge that that yarn uh, that the designer used has. Because when you look up a stockinette gauge and you see, oh, I get it that the ball band says 20 stitches per four inch on a US seven. And the designer's using that yarn, but saying 24 stitches per, U, uh, per four inch on a US five, that gives you that information. So what I'm saying is actually all the information is right there for you in a professionally written pattern. We just need to look for it. Um, okay. Uh, 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 uh. 
I need to watch again. Interruption, sorry. Local yarn store, yes. Please support your local yarn store ice cream. <laughs> um, all right, I'm just trying to catch up and oh my God, I really have to go. I can't believe you guys have hung in for, for, with me for so long. Um, so this is what I want to say. Um, oh, read the tags. Yes, read the tags. Okay, here's all I want to say. And I'm going to talk about tomorrow, the, the choices we make in life. So that's part three of this discussion about price inclusivity. Everything is a choice and everything has trade-offs. So in my life, have I used big box yarns? Absolutely. And frankly, in my life, have I bought from Amazon? Yeah, I buy from Amazon sometimes when I have to, even knowing the consequences, even knowing that the employees aren't treated well and I shouldn't be supporting this. So I'm not being a hypocrite. I'm saying I do that, but I do it mindfully. And when I can buy local, I do. So everything is a trade-off and the yarns that are more expensive are often more expensive for a reason. And the yarn companies that I choose to support are always ethical. So often I choose to support a female owned business, a family run business, um, a business like, a, you know, North Life Fibers, family run business, husband and wife run that company. I know they pay their staff well. I know they're good people, honorable people, give so much back to the community. Um, Anzula, female owned company, all hand dyed, American made, pays her staff well so ethical. I want to support her. Um, she and I have spoken many times of um, the difficulty in the choices she makes in pricing because she could charge less if she um, made other decisions. Decisions that involve paying people less or using um, yarn from mills that paid people less. So everything's a choice. Everything's a choice. Um, and we need to make our choices and understand that there is no right or wrong. And we need to stop judging people. I, I, I'd love for the judgment to stop. And that includes, I don't judge anyone that is subbing for 100% acrylic. And I don't judge anyone who says, you know, that, that reasonably priced Barocco yarn or Valley yarn, I, I decided to knit it out of 100% cashmere and I spent $700 on it. I'm not going to say like, you're crazy. That's, you know, I mean, that's judgmental and not okay. So um, yeah, that's what I have to say. Um, own your craft, ask the questions, know that a pattern is instructions on them how to make that thing. It's not a knitting how-to book. There are amazing knitting classes out there. There are, there are people that spend their lives wanting to teach. These are different things. Okay. I can't believe how long I've been on here and I have a meeting and I have a uh, 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 a video sweater class that frankly is going to be ready when it's ready. And I'll be honest with you, I'm very shortly going to be talking about that on Ravelry that is a very complicated pattern that I've decided to design for you all. And um, I'm not going to force it into a deadline. So y'all are going to have to wait for it a little bit because it has to be right. So there. So, um, okay. Thank you guys for hanging in with me. So now we know, we know what we have to say as we all say our goodbyes. You can type it along with me, but I'm going to add a new one because um, I don't know if you saw, I was very proud. Um, Dr. Fauci used New York as an example of what a state can do. And I'm very proud of my state because we've taken, we've really committed to wearing masks and staying safe. So here we go. Wash your hands, don't touch your face, put a mask on and knit on. 
Thank you guys so much. I cannot believe you hung on with me this long. Thank you.